What's up guys, new video here, and now we're back in the garage with the 1.5 AC S13. In the last video you saw the S13 get tuned, made about 500 horsepower, and uh, it's ready to party. But, this thing does get kind of hot, and the radiator is not doing anything. This is an old coil rad that I've had for about three years now, and I think it's pretty much uh, heat soaked and bowed out, and it's basically not doing anything. And while we were at the dyno, uh, we noticed there was the... Uh, there was no hot air coming out of the radiator with the fans where it was cold air, but the top of the radiator was hot, which means it's not flowing and it's not really doing anything. So in that case, uh, we need a new radiator. Now, I'm waiting on one that should be here tomorrow, but while I'm doing this new radiator, I'm gonna do way, way, way bigger and stronger fans. So right now we have the Flexalite normal shroud built-in fan thing that we have been running for about two years now, three-ish years now, something like that. They do the job pretty good. Um, they work very, very well for what it is, but I really think that it's time to upgrade this to get it to be even better. Now, this car, you know, normal JZ stuff does run hot, especially in the summer, especially drifting, especially driving at high RPM and stuff like that. The setup does work very, very well, and I do recommend it to somebody that has to do it on a budget. But now we have to get rid of the setup. It's time to go to the next level. And uh, Coil Rad is very, very good. These are great radiators. But I do have a new sponsor and a new radiator coming in, which is a new line that they have. You know, as you guys will see that in a little bit. It's not here yet. It'll be here tomorrow. But now my new fans came in. Like I said before, these fans are a Flexalite shroud fan kit thing. Um, they do work pretty well, but uh, they're very slim and they fit really good. But now I found the next setup that will keep this engine much, much cooler. All right, got the new Dural or Dural, I don't know how to say it, performance fans, high output dual rad fans. Now these are much, much bigger and these have about 4,000 CFM combined, which is crazy. That's almost double what I have now. Now these fans that I've had only run about 2,500 uh, CFMs, which is decent, but 4,000 is going to be a huge huge difference and uh i am very excited to get these on the car we are gonna have to modify them a bit we're gonna have to kind of trim about from here and then here to get them to bring them in closer like this now a lot of s chassis guys do run these uh fans uh hunter has them in his car uh gusta miles has them on his car and he told me just if you get these this thing will run way cooler but you do have to slightly modify these fans it's not a big deal that's what we're here for it's not hard it's very very easy the wiring is basically already done for these fans all i gotta do is snip uh the old wires from the previous fans and just wire the new plugs to the new fans but uh all in all it's gonna be much much better i want this car to run much cooler it's gonna be a very very hot you know year obviously at clutch trickers and normal events and in florida and basically anywhere i kind of missed the whole colder season here in florida which is like 60 to 60 to 70 degrees or 50 degrees compared to 80 90 100 degrees in the summer when uh clutch trickers comes around but uh Again, this thing looks awesome. It ran great, made great power, but this radiator is toast, it's old. Once I pull it out, I'll show you guys how bowed it actually is and under so you can understand why I'm getting a new one and why it's not working. Um, like I said, on the dyno, we got like cold air blowing out from here, which is not correct, and it was hot here, which means all that hot water was basically trapped in there and it wasn't doing anything. So we did like one, two, or three pulls and this thing got pretty freaking hot and it should not have been getting that hot. And uh, I think the last time we drove this thing at OSW, when we got it really, really hot and we lost the engine because of the non, because of the improper cooling, when we did not have this coolant uh, line going back to the engine to cool the back of the engine down, um, I think the whole entire thing that happened was one big catastrophic fuck up, basically. So, yeah, I'm not trying to do that again. Now we have proper cooling, proper fueling, clean injectors, really good tuning. Um, good wiring to the uh, coolant sensor. I want to do the next big thing with these fans and the new radiator setup. So enough jibber jabber, let's get to it. Okay, so before I start tackling into the car, I want to get these opened up, take a look at them first and show you guys how much bigger these actually are and how much nicer these are. Um, it's not sponsored, I didn't have to get these, but I needed them because this thing is getting way too hot and uh, gotta get driving very soon in about two weeks. So I'll try to get this done in advance so I'm not rushing. Oh yeah. Oops, screws. Alright, oh, shit, these are way bigger. Alright. Okay, wow, these are way bigger. Way nicer quality. Uh definitely gonna be a big, big upgrade. Really excited to get these in the car to uh have way better cooling. The setup I had before worked, like I said, but like you can do two laps and it gets pretty warm. 
I wanted to do many laps and consistently stay cool. Um, so this engine stays extra cold. Well, not cold, but like extra neutral, so it's not always hot or 200 degrees type stuff. So this should work much better. I have heard these fans on other people's cars and they blow like a freaking damn tornado or whatever you want to <laughs> compare it to. It's freaking crazy. So before I do anything, I'm gonna make sure that these fit with this radiator in my setup I have on this car so I don't have to return broken fans or cut up fans. So, all right, let's get to it. Time lapse and go. <laughs> So problem A is I thought machine shop would definitely help out with the engine being hot tanked to get all the rust and crap out of the water jacket areas and uh, that's not the case. Other than the radiator being bad, I think uh, the whole entire engine was filled with like basically brownie batter, rusty water that was not doing its job, totally nasty. Uh, I didn't film it but this whole thing was filled with like basically brownie batter looking crap rusty water so i dumped it out and now before i do anything else i'm gonna i'm basically flushing out the entire system with a hose into a bucket and all the crap out the water down there already looks much much clearer much better so that's gonna be the first thing i do right now is get all the crap out of the motor flush it out probably won't get every single thing but this would definitely help a ton with cooling and having nice clean water in there i should have done this from the beginning but i didn't think about it i thought the machine shop would you know, with the engine being hot tanked, it would help, but I guess not. So I'm going to continue to flush this out so I can get uh, this block much cleaner. And then after that, we will go to modifying the fans and then wiring them, fitting them to the radiator. Now, my new radiator and my old radiator are the same size. So I'm gonna measure um, basically the same way I would measure on the other radiator. But this thing is toaster, and if you can see it, how bowed it is. It's basically like expanding and blowing up. It's It's, totally bowed out and it's all miscombobulated and just terrible so that is uh duns rooney it's old it's like three to four years old now and definitely got to get uh <laughs> a new one in there so we will not be running coil anymore we have a new sponsor coming on board that'll be in the car probably tomorrow or next day but uh, other than that i'll keep flushing this out and get to the fans it looks like it's orange but it's just uh from the previous uh pours with the wa white bucket but uh the water is much clearer much better and it's ready to go for the next setup so done with that now it's time to get back to the new fans and start uh cutting and well fitting and then uh as we fit them cut them then fit them to the radiator first i'm gonna put this on the previous radiator put it back in the car see how much space we have to play with between the engine and the fans make sure we're good once we're good on that we'll go from there and then go back to here and finally cut and fit these fans all right, so right here is the old radiator. Uh, the specs between this one and the new one are basically the same. So I'm going to basically ballpark the measuring, but it's going to be the same. <laughs> so uh, to save time, get a head start. Uh, I'm going to get these things mocked up, see how they fit. I'm going to put one on, one by one on each side to uh, make sure I have enough room between the engine and the radiator before I do anything. So uh, that's step one. So I'm going to get one of these on here right now. We'll start with this side first. See how it fits on here. This radiator is so effed. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay, there's that. And the second one is here. Just so you guys can see. Yeah, we gotta cut this down. A good amount. So, <laughs> all right. So on an S chassis radiator, you get the cut basically right here. So this line here and this line here, cut one on this side, cut one on this side, and then push it together and then sandwich it. And then it should be good to go. It will be the exact same as the length of those. But now when you cut these to spec, it should fit perfectly fine on this radiator. Um, it is much, much uh, bigger than these currently. So yeah, you can definitely see how this side's there and this side has about a uh, two inch overhang. So basically take like two inches off of this to fit it uh, perfectly with the radiator as a whole. See if this thing will fit. I'm going to do one by one. I'm going to zip tie. Well, I could, no, I'll do one by one. I'll do the left side and the right side. I'll zip tie on temporarily, throw it in the car and see how much room we have. Should be good, hopefully. So <laughs> it's really, really close. 
You see that bolt down there? I'm trying to show you guys. Come on, camera, focus. Come on. But right down there, you can see there's actually like a good amount of room, if you want to call it that, between the crank pulling and the bolt for the fan. But other than that, it fits uh, pretty good. It's way closer than I like. But the difference in fans and the difference in CFM compared to the shit we had before is like night and day. Like this is going to be a huge upgrade. And if we really, really, really wanted to, we could kind of refab this to where this comes down more and, and you know, kind of remake this piece if you wanted to do that. But I don't have time for that maybe in the future. But honestly, I think it'll work. I'm going to pull this one off real quick and try this side and hopefully it'll fit. It's going to be a very tight very tight fit but hopefully it'll work i think it will let's try the other side so this side's good very close but this side is a common denominator because we have uh that we have this it's very now the way i'm looking at it right now it's extremely close so we'll see like if you look at that it's gonna be like centimeter i mean mil i very freaking close all right let's try it all right we made it by the skin of our freaking teeth dude all right we're in actually much more than i anticipated uh it's very close to the crane pulley down there very close but uh i think we'll be good i'm very stoked on this this means this car is going to run so so much cooler 4000 cfm fans holy moly this is perfect i'm stoked okay now that we know that both sides fit it's time to cut the centerpiece and get these things fitted up and we'll rewire them to the current wiring setup we have in there. The wiring setup we have should be plenty for these. Um, all I'm going to do basically is just cut off the previous plugs and then just tap into the new wires on these fans. And then the, our plugs for the fans will work like it did before. So that's perfect. Very simple. I'll get the wiring stuff out. And then, uh, well, I'm going to cut first, then wire, and then uh, fit these things. So let's get to it. All right. Wish me luck. <laughs> Cutting the brand new fans. Fan number one is cut. That was actually really easy. Cool. So one more to go, and then uh, time to get them on the uh, radiator, wire them up, and then uh, wait the next day to get the new radiator. All right. So now the middle is cut out, and now the fans fit pretty much even with the radiator. This one is bowed out, so it's not going to be completely accurate with the new one. So uh, it does look like it'll be fitting perfectly uh, lengthwise with the new radiator, and I'm very happy with it. It's actually really really easy. So if you have a Jay Z or a RB or something like that in the S13. You don't want to do a rear mount radiator. You can do a nice Koyo or Mishimoto X-Line radiator or something like that. And uh, with these fans, I'm sure it will do the job just fine. If you want it even colder and want it even, even cooler, you could do a rear mount radiator that is very expensive and time consuming and involves much fab work and all that kind of stuff. And I don't want to deal with that right now. So right now, this is the best thing possible. Maybe the next setup will do a rear mount with these fans and a bigger radiator in the back. But we'll see when we get to that point. But right now, this will work. We have OSW spring brake bash in about two weeks or three weeks from now. So we have plenty of layaway time to get this done. So uh, cool. So that's all good. Now, uh, I do want to get these things uh, like together and mount it up with some brackets and have them done so and ready to go. Then I want to wire them up and uh, test that they work and then go from there. But other than that, looks pretty good. Cutting it was really easy. Uh, the shroud, well, it's like a built-in shroud that fan, obviously, right here. But uh, it's going to sit very nice. I might go get some uh, 
some kind of stripping to do on the outer edge so it's like a soft fit so we can kind of squish onto there and not let any uh, air out. Um, not sure yet, but I might have to go to the store in a second, get a few pieces of metal, do a bracket here and a bracket here, and then should be good to go. But honestly, I might be able to just send it the way it is like this. I don't, know, I don't think I need a bracket. So uh, yeah, we'll try that and we should be good to go. All right, so we are officially finished with the wiring of the fans and the fitting of the fans. I need some temporary like uh, routing for the wires right now, but everything's wired, loomed, and it looks nice. Got some pretty decent clearance with these big ass fans in there, so I'm pretty happy with that. Right now, everything's zip tied on basically just to get everything on there to, for mock up, and then tomorrow when the new radiator comes in, we'll get to uh, take this all apart again, put the new radiator in, and then just basically plug everything back in. But this is how it's gonna look, and it looks great, it fits great. Now it's time to put the computer on and uh, test the outputs and make sure they work. It's gonna be a huge difference with 4,000 CFM. It's gonna be like a freaking hurricane in here. So I'm excited. I'm gonna get the computer, plug it in, see how it ha and see what happens. All right, so I got the ECU Master software up right here, ready to go. On this software, you can uh, test the inputs and uh, invert the outputs just like every, every other software, basically. So let's give it a quick test and see how it goes. Holy moly. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> That's just one fan right there. I do have separate triggers, so we'll test the other one. But that's one of them. <laughs> that is wild. All right, that's one. Two. There it is. Oh my God. That is insane. I right, test both real quick at the same time, if I'm able to. Oh yeah. <laughs> so much better oh my goodness that's literally crazy jeez i'm being like blown i have like air like flying like a freaking hurricane you guys just you guys should probably hear the air through the mic oh hell yeah that's sick jeez dude all right so we have success we have brand new Doral or Doral, I don't know how to say it, Doral fans. And uh, 4,000 CFM compared to the old shitty, kind of did the job, 2,500 CFM. And uh, they work, but like, dude, <laughs> I think one of these is like both of those. So that's a big, big upgrade. But uh, okay, wiring's good. Well, the fitment is good. They work. And now we have to wait one more day to uh, get the new radiator in there. And then we should be good to go. I am stoked, that was awesome. I'm so happy that these are in. It was very, very easy to be honest. But other than that, we are basically done until tomorrow until the new radiator comes in. So I'll see you guys then. All right, so it is the next day and the new radiators have just showed up. It is new sponsor for 2022. Alberto actually put me in touch with Mishimoto and uh, Mishimoto will be on board for 2022. We have brand new radiators right here. We have their new SR20 X line. It's a triple core. We have their normal SR20 uh, dual pass radiator. And then we have their uh, fan trial kit that uh, I probably won't be using for this car, but I'll probably use it for something else uh, later in the future, like Jacob's S13 that'll be on the channel very soon. But uh, yeah, so right now I have the Coil N-Flow. Coil N-Flows actually aren't very good for track cars without the uh, proper swirl pot. With the Coil N-Flows, I've heard you can get some air pockets um, with the way it's designed, and uh, we don't want that. I've heard with really good fans like the ones we just installed, and a dual pass or a triple core, it will do uh, very, very well and do much better with temps. So. With that being said, we're going to be installing their triple core X-Line radiator. The reason why we have two radiators here is because the S13 X-Line for SR20 uh, is out of stock in about a month and we're kind of on a time crunch, not too much, but we want to get this done in advance so nothing's last minute. Um, now, so this is the S14 SR20 uh, radiator. It will fit with this car, but I'm pretty sure the tabs for the mounting points for the brackets up top are in a different spot, which is not that big of a deal. I can use zip ties and get brackets made later on. And uh, this, this thing will, and this thing will definitely be exactly what I want to install. If for some reason it doesn't work, or I don't like it, we can just install the uh, normal dual pass SR20 radiator for now, and then wait till the other one gets in stock, and then we will uh, install the X-Line later on. But I think the X-Line S14 SR20 radiator will work, and uh, it will be good for our, our application, but uh, I'm very excited to have a much, much better cooling setup because this thing was getting really hot, and uh, it's just time for it to not be hot. So. Big thanks to Mishimoto for coming on board for 2022. Thanks to Alberto Big Boost for helping me out and getting in touch with them for this season. Oh, Ricky from Mishimoto did an awesome job helping me out. I'm very stoked to be a part of Mishimoto for 2022 and so on. 
But uh, yeah, okay, let's get it installed and uh, get ready to go. We do have to get our Dash 16 bungs welded onto the proper radiator we're gonna use today. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull the old one out and then put the new X-Line in to see how it fits. And then once I can confirm it's good, we're gonna go get these welded on, come back and throw it in the car for final assembly. All right, so this is the normal SR20 dual pass radiator. We might use this, might not, but we'll probably use it for the future if we don't use it today. Um, we have their SR20 fan shroud kit. Now this is good for a stock SR, um, for Jay-Z's not as much. You can't really fit their race fans in uh, a Jay-Z swapped car unless you do some crazy fab work and crazy placement of stuff. And uh, that's why we got the Doral fans with 4,000 CFM that are very slim and push out a ton of air. So. That is why we're using those, but Mishimoto does work for a smaller engine application when you have more room. So these will go to the side for now, but our main focus will be this X-Line radiator, which I'm very, very excited to try. Alberto said he runs this in Z36 and his temps are awesome with the proper fan setup and radiator. So hopefully we can get on his level and uh, stuff like that. But I do have friends that have tried this with this fan setup and, and they said it's freaking sweet. So let's see how it looks. Should be good. I've always loved Mishimoto's packaging. It's pretty freaking sweet and like super safe. I gotta worry about nothing. Okay, yeah, so the, the tabs are in a different spot, but that'll be okay. It will fit regardless. All right. All right, here it is. Here is the X-Line uh, triple core radiator. Now this is, uh, has basically has more cooling rows than the dual pass. The dual pass would work fine. Um, but uh, I really want to run this and I think this will be much better for uh, what we're working with. But uh, this thing looks great. Super shiny. All the above. <laughs> Good stuff here. So I need the SR radiator because the water next, because the water outlets on the proper size I need. Same as this one right here. The KA version is too close and it kind of makes it too, I don't like how it is. I just don't like it. But this uh, looks pretty good. So uh, I'm going to take the old ones out. Get this in the car and we should be good to go for uh, uh, installation. Uh, so I'm waiting all day for my Mishimoto care package to uh, come in. And I was going to wait and wait and wait. I waited so long. I got impatient. So I started filming, unboxing everything. My care package just came in. So now we can empty it out and see all the goodies we got. All right. Get a bunch of Mishimoto stickers. Some air fresheners, which I need. Oh. We got a little koozie, and we got the shirt. Hell yeah, I'm wearing that pretty soon. I need more shirts. But okay, that came in out of nowhere. Right after I started filming. Sick, okay. All right, first test of this going in. Should fit fine. Where's the hole? Where's the hole? All right, so it does fit. We're good to go on that. I can say one thing that's different is the uh, mounting tabs right here. So for now, I'll run a zip tie to both sides to hold it in place. Then I'll get some actual brackets done pretty soon, but uh, it will work, so it's good. Okay, cool. So my plan has worked out very well to get the fans faded and wired last night. And now we will go and uh, get the uh, fittings welded on here, and then we'll be good to go. So uh, yeah, we'll be right back with the new fittings welded on, and then we'll get these things in there. So it's the next day, it's Saturday, and we have the radiator in. The Mishimoto X-Line SR20 radiator is in the car. The only thing right now that's annoying about this is we have zip tie radiator uh, mounts. It's okay for now, it works, it ain't going nowhere. It's very, very tight. Um, the S13 mounts go here, and then S14 mounts are on the sides. I could get some mounts made to go like right here if I wanted to keep this radiator, which I might do, but I don't like this. I don't like this going the opposite way. Right now it's kinked because it's not the same, obviously the same length as before, but I have to get a longer uh, line for that to make it not be as kinked and it can run right down back through and be good to go. But other than that, we are ready to go. I'm gonna get the wiring routed uh, properly through here, get it all ready to go and in final place and then uh, put the coolant in, and, well, well, water wetter in and water in and then uh, should be good to go to bleed this thing and be done so. So very excited, Mishimoto looks awesome in there. It's a lot bigger, it's a lot wider than the other one. I, well, 
it's not as wide, but it looks wider. <laughs> but I'm stoked on it, so let's get to it. All right, so we are officially done. All set to go to get the distilled water and water wetter in there. Now, I will say, it is very, very close to the car. You can see, I would love to re-engineer this later on to bring it more forward, which we can do. Um, we'll figure that out later on though. Uh, but for now, this will work. Um, uh, I would like to have the heat go somewhere, but like with the S chassis on a front mount radiator, it's definitely tough. But there is definitely room to re-engineer this piece to come out way further up forward to have a bigger gap in the front. So that could be something we can do later on. We did uh, build this front end to those fans so it is a big difference but this will work for now and uh, maybe later on before clutch triggers we can get this thing redone in the front and uh, change it up a little bit so we can have some more room because there's plenty of room here we can probably bring this up about a, i don't know maybe an inch or inch and a half to get it closer to the front of the car so we can have more room between the engine and the fans but this will work for now don't mind my ghetto zip tie mounts because that's the only thing i have right now that'll work um it is very close but uh it is clearing it <laughs> It's really close, but it will work for now. But uh, this will be way better than before. So, all right, let's get to it. Get some uh, water water in there with the VP Racing Fuels, uh, the cool down additive. If you guys didn't know, the VP Racing Fuels cool down is a little bit better for iron blocks like 2Js. It helps with the corrosion. Uh, the water water does work, but this, I heard, is definitely better for iron blocks. But uh, yeah, so when you do this stuff, always put this in first so we can get in the system first. Uh, you can do one or two. I'm doing one for now. Uh, maybe when I do the S13 radiator, I'll do uh, two of these. And then uh, the rest of it is just old water. So, all right, let's get to it. All right, most of the water is in. We used about a gallon and a, well, almost, yeah, about a gallon and a little over a half. Um, that's before you start the car. When you start the car, you can properly bleed it, add the rest of the water, bleed it up, and be donezo and ready to go. So let's start the car and get to it. And also when you bleed a car or a drift car or anything like that, you wanna have the car to its highest point, jack it up so it's up to its highest point you can properly bleed out the whole system. We are officially done. Everything is in, bled, and ready to go. Uh, this video wasn't that much. It was more of just uh, getting a way better cooling system for the 240, and now I think it will be golden. So next video, we'll probably be getting this car ready to drive OSW Spring Break Bash and to go have some fun and finally drive this thing with a new setup. I'm very excited for it. Last time I drove was actually the other 
three-day weekend event at OSW, OSW Black Friday, when we lost the last engine due to those dumb issues, but all those issues are addressed and fixed, and now we have all the proper cooling needs, wiring needs, uh, and all the above. So we are ready to go. We have to get an alignment next week, do an oil change, and then we should be ready to go drive. But that will be it for this video, guys. The car is gonna be so much better. It's gonna run so much cooler. Uh, it's already getting hot down here in Florida, so I'm ready to, uh, Put this thing through some hell, go drive it, have some fun, and get back out there, drive, get some seat time, dial in the car, drive like two or three more events, and then drive round and one of Plus Shakers 2022. But until then, I'll see you guys soon.